Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Klaus to the Heart Live on ON TV. I'm Jason Klaus, and we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your night to watch this. This is going to be a very special edition of this show. Now, we've, we've been doing this for a little while now. We have a few episodes under our belt, but I, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that here tonight is going to be unlike anything that we've done before. And that's saying something because we've had some tremendous guests on here and we've told a lot of, of personal and a lot of emotional stories. But for myself personally and for my two guests here tonight, it gets no more personal than this because with me is Todd Gilbert and Tyler Shanto. And if you are Michigan wrestling or organization fans, this may look a little weird right now because <laughs> of everything now that, that went that went down last weekend mm -hmm. at, at WrestleRama 27. We're not going to talk about that. We've put all that to the side here, gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. especially you, Tyler. <laughs> now, here tonight on, on ON TV, we are going to pay tribute to a founding member of our organization, the MWO. Not only that, but my brother, my best friend, my tag team partner, uh, Pierre Fury, uh, just one of the all-time greats. And um, here tonight live on the eve of what have been his 42nd birthday, we are going to share some stories, show some clips, and just have a good time. So, so, so gentlemen, right out of the gate, I want to thank you for, for taking time out of, of, your, of your schedules to come here, put all the animosity to the side, <laughs> um, because we don't have a ring here tonight, right? Yeah. This, uh, we, we, we spared no expense on, on this set here. We don't, mean, we don't want one it ruined. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we rolled out the red carpet, right? Um, now, you guys are here because... You guys both had very unique, very different re relationships with Jeff. Um, and they went far beyond what we did in a show setting, in a wrestling ring. I know for, for the both of you, he meant a lot to, to you on a personal level. Um, Todd, let's start with, with you real quick. Um, now, you guys had a bond almost immediately. Yeah. You know, you came in when you were in introduced to the organization. It wasn't for a spot on the roster. No, you came no. in to, um, to 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 do the the DDP yoga yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Jeff was one of the first guys that really took an, an interest in you. Yeah. Once we once we figured out that you did have a an interest to join wrestling, you mm -hmm. had a passion for it. Um, so, I mean, the foundation of your relationship may have been wrestling related, but it, it developed in, into so much more, right? Absolutely. So, so kind of take me through um, your first meeting with him, your first mm -hmm. dealings with him, and when you realized that you were one of Jeff's boys. Well, it was it was funny because when I came to the show, when you and I had talked first before we'd even met. Um, it was the Bunkhouse Brawl 2015, I believe it was. Has it been that long? Yeah. My yeah, goodness. We're old. <laughs> um, and I, I, when I got there and I went to meet with you, I hadn't met Jeff yet. And we went in the back to talk, and Jeff came back with you, but he didn't speak the whole time. He just stood there, just kind of like sizing me up as we're talking. <laughs> and at first I'm like, is this guy... Does this guy like me? This is weird. Is this guy going to swing at me? What's going on here? Right. And, um, you know, we did the thing and everything. Um, but then what I realized he was actually doing, um, was, I mean, was that, but in a good way. You know what I mean? He, Jeff was a very guarded person until he got to know you. Sure. Once Jeff felt like he could trust you, he became a completely different person. No, you're absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right about that. This yeah. is kind of how he was, not just in a business you know, setting, but also right. in terms of, I mean, that's how he conducted his life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, once, you, once you were in, you were in, but it took a minute to, right. uh, to get there, right? It's like the mob. You're not getting out once you're in. Right. <laughs> you're, you're stuck. I mean, we, we, had, we shared the same sense of humor. 
We liked a lot of the same stuff when we got to talking at shows. Um, it, we pretty much hit it off instantly right after you brought me into the company. Mm -hmm. We had that breakfast at the Coney Island there, and Jeff was mm -hmm. there with all of us. And like right after that, we just became instant friends. It was it was pretty awesome. Uh, Tyler, let's uh, l let's switch over to you, pal. Um, what was your first meeting with him like? Because our dynamic, your your dynamic with him is a little bit different than what Todd's was. Uh, because you came in first as talent, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You came in as, as, a, as a member of the roster, and um, so you have, you have a completely di different like in introduction t to Jeff. So kind of ta take me through how you, how you guys met and um, what, that, what that first initial meeting and when you realized you were one of, of his guys. You know, and like Todd said, it took it took a while. It, it, something I didn't realize right away. Um, my my first show was Christmas Clash of 2015, and and it, when I got there, um, you weren't you weren't there at the moment. Um, you you had gone out and got lunch, I, I believe it was, and I, I was kind of hanging out with the guys. Jeff Jeff was around too, and I kind of got given this um, impromptu trial match, and mm. and Jeff and and Mark Bruff he, they. Both guys said, "Hey, you did pretty good. Um, but thanks for coming out. We'd, we'd like to kind of see you next time." And about an hour later, I get a tap on the shoulder saying, "Hey, we got an extra spot for you." And next thing I know, I'm, I'm the first day I show up. I'm, I'm on I'm on the card. I'm, and at the time, I didn't realize it was a super card either. And, mm -hmm. and so looking back, it was a really big deal. And Jeff was because I I always kind of viewed you very early on as very as very standoffish. Like it, it, it took me a while to kind of get used to your personality and Jeff's, Jeff's as well. Right. And so for a little while, Jeff was kind of my initial go-to because because with, with you, he's like, I don't, I don't know if Jason likes me. I don't know <laughs> if I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong here. And, but, and but Jeff was kind of the same way too, but Jeff was a little more approachable for me at that moment. I think it's more, it's, I really didn't want to bother you because you're not going on. Show days are, are a busy day for you. Right. So I, I kind of cling to Jeff pretty early because he became the guy I wanted to go to and figure out what I need to be doing instead of bothering you. And that's kind of where me and Jeff started to get close because it, you know, it wasn't until I, I won the TV championship for the first time that it occurred to me that, um, and I believe you had mentioned it, and then just in passing with Jeff, is um, I never realized how close me and Jeff were or how, how much Jeff thought of me until then because almost everything that's happened in my career with NWO, in some facet, Jeff was the one pulling the strings behind it or, or at least putting the whispers out there of having confidence in me. I think we talked about this a little bit when you were on on the YouTube show when when you came on, and on there, you know, we had kind of talked a little bit about this. Jeff was very much like the buffer between the roster and me, mm -hmm. because, you know, like you said, when on show days, there's a thousand things happening, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we we got to make sure that all of our ducks in a row, and when you're talking about you know, overseeing a roster of 25 to 30 people, you know, that's a lot of different personalities. So he kind of assumed that role of, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to talk to Jason or get to Jason, you're going through me first, you know. So he was very kind of standoffish. He was almost like a guardian type, type of, you know, kind of like, like the gatekeeper, right? right. You know, like, mm -hmm. all right, you, you, you can enter, but just know I'm watching, right? right. Um, and like with you, Todd, you know, you guys, your relationship, while, I mean, it, it got very strong professionally, it was a, a personal thing with you guys. Like he and I had many a conversation where uh -oh. you, you, were, you were the topic of it, uh -oh. you know, because it was, well, I mean, you, you've talked about it before on either the podcast or, or YouTube or, or, or whatever. You wanted to get in the ring. You wanted to wrestle in the ring. And, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. You know, there's limitations, sure. right? Sure. And, uh, you know, that's not disparaging no, by no. any stretch of the imagination. It just is what, what it is. Right. Um, and we were running into problems with the insurance company yeah. when, when they found out about you. Yeah. And knowing that you wanted to be in the ring. And it, and it caused all kinds of, of issues. And I remember having conversations with him 
about this very thing and he says you know we've got to figure something out for this guy and it's like he totally went to bat for you yeah just like he did with you you know when the whole tv title thing came up you know it's like okay we have a select number of guys here that that we're looking at and who do, who do we want to put the strap on where are we going with this and he was very adamant it's got to be tyler it's got to be tyler and you know that's you know because you and i well all four of us with my brother and your brother aaron we had a tremendous feud mm -hmm. over the over the tag team championship so breaking you off and doing a singles thing, you know, once we had, I mean, we knew what we had with you, you know, from an in-ring standpoint. But him coming in and, I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, it was like this, it, it's got to be Tyler because he's ready. He's, he's paid his dues. I'm comfortable with him, yada, yada, yada. So that's kind of, you know, a, a big reason why I wanted you guys on here tonight you know um and we're going to play a few a few different clips here late you know during the course of this program here but um before we do and i want to share like i want to i want this to be as upbeat and light as, as we can because sure. jeff klaus the man b behind the scenes <laughs> was one of the funniest dudes there ever was yeah. right yeah um Tyler, you posted a couple of videos this week <laughs> um, on his tribute page on Facebook. And um, mm. a lot of people have watched those clips since since you uploaded them. And I didn't even know those videos existed. So it was fun to go back and watch that. Like, I remember them. Mm -hmm. After I watched them, I was like, oh, they set me up, right? Mm -hmm. um, kind of talk me through the backstory, and what what we're talking about here is, um, we we were setting up for a show, and I believe it was at the NTC Church in Burton, and w our equipment comes in great big totes, so it's not that big. Well, <laughs> big enough to put you in, <laughs> you know. Todd's not fitting in them. No, um, <clears throat> but. Uh, they 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 had this thing where they concocted this idea where they would put Tyler in one of the totes and they would bring various roster members up to, for him to pop out and scare the crap out, out of everybody. <laughs> so kind of talk me through what how did that whole idea come to be? Kind of talk me through this. Well, as everyone knows, Jeff is quite the prankster and likes to, to mess with everybody. And anyone who gets to know me... When, because when I first meet someone, I'm 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 pretty quiet and yeah, kind very of, shy. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Sure. Because I, you you me, me first meeting me and me now it's like man I'll take I'll take first meeting him because I I can't shut him up now. <laughs> right. So um. For sure. I'm very much the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much the same way as Jeff in that level of making picking on people and pranking people and, and having jokes and we had, we had emptied the toad at the show and the and Jeff. Looking at me, he goes, goes, man, I bet you could fit in this thing. So we're, we're, it started off with just seeing if I could fit in the thing. So I'm, I'm getting in there, and Jeff, it's one of the ones that like, kind of folds in on itself. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Jeff's like, man, we, we can definitely close this all the way. And then I say, you, you we should we should have you just start start bring, asking people to come get tools out of the tote, and I'll just jump out at people. And Jeff goes, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so early on and set up that um, mm -hmm. there's still people kind of flocking to get there. Right. So we were able to kind of pull it off where we, where we could do one, and there would still be people that weren't, aren't even there yet. So Because usually if you have everyone there, you're only going to pull it off once or twice sure. before everyone catches on to the joke. Right. So we we started with poor Andrew Steele. <laughs> and, I remember that one. And, and he, he, Jeff asked uh, Andrew, hey, can you go get a hammer out of the tote? And, and you know Andrew, he's, he's quick to go, like, oh, yeah. go in and help out. And yes. So he goes all, he gets all the way into the tote, and he goes... And I, here's me, just like, and he jumps back, grabs his chest, he goes, he almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff like, is, is struggling even to keep standing, up, 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 how much he was laughing. But then you get back from lunch. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll pick this up because he <laughs> set me up perfectly. 
he waited and and I was I was coming back in into the venue I went and, and had lunch with with somebody that day to come back to the venue um, and and it was early and set up because if you watch the clip and it's on his tribute page on Facebook I believe it's it's public for mm -hmm. for those of you who are who want who want to check this out you can see that the ring is still being built in in the background you know it's down I mean I think we have like like the floorboards on and the frame is 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 all set up but like they're just putting the pads on I mean we're a long way for, from the show the guy sets me up by by saying we have a huge problem I mean as soon as I as as soon as I walk in back into the venue which as a promoter or you know somebody that's in charge that's really the last thing that you want to hear we have a huge problem <laughs> so he walks me over to he's like look what somebody put in this tote and as soon as he said that that's when you popped out looking like a jack-in-the-box <laughs> uh, and I and I remember two things one I, I I looked at you and I was just like how in the hell did you fit into this thing <laughs> number one and number two I was you know, Pete owed at him for setting me up, you know, because it did. It startled me, and I and I don't scare easy. Anybody that we have this thing at work, and this is a sidebar. We have this thing at work where we have a little old, older lady, very sweet, very cool chick. Um, she likes to try to scare me, and it never works. So, you know, I'm very hard to to startle, but you did because you popped out like like I said, like a jack in a box. Um, now the you shared another clip on that with our current heavyweight champion Jack Terran and on that video on you know when you got him the one thing that I noticed was he brought his his fist up <laughs> yeah. he like I mean it I mean he balled it right up and I came in right at the at the at the end of the shot and I'm slapping his hand <laughs> because I didn't want, want him to sit there and sucker punch you you know what that I mean it was almost the end of Tyler Dean it, it sure is it, it, it would have been he was gonna yeah it certainly would have been. Um, it was that quick reaction, like it was too. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very cool rib and and very funny stuff. Um, do you have any funny ri ribbing stories? Um, I wasn't really part of a lot of ribs with Jeff. Really, most of us was just joking around backstage. And uh, if, if you ever see the show Mystery Science Theater three thousand, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that was kind of gorilla when Jeff was around. Mm -hmm. And we would just sit there, Mystery Science 3000 in the matches, commentating stuff like we were the commentators. It was it was pretty ridiculous. That was pretty much backstage life with Jeff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's funny you, you say that because later on during your career, you know, both your careers, really, you guys would actually call the main event of the 2019 Trick or Slam. Oh, God. Uh, which I had <laughs> forgotten about because... Um, on my YouTube show, I sat down with Rick Cartier and Jeremiah J. Hughes, and we did a watch along. So when you do a watch along, anybody that is f familiar with that concept is you turn the volume down, and we're kind of talking about what what went into the match and what happened here, why we did this. And I didn't realize until I went back to watch the match. And I forgot about it actually that mm -hmm. you guys were doing commentary yeah. on on that match, and it's one of my favorite matches that I've not only that I've done here at ON TV, but in my career. You know, we're talking. I, I've been doing this for 27 yeah. years now. You know what yeah. I mean? But that one stands out. I remember going to the back asking you because we needed somebody to do commentary with me, and Jeff was just sitting there. He had gotten changed. He was just hanging out, and I'm like, Jeff, you want to do it? And he goes, you sure you want me to do this? <laughs> well, we all know, you know, you put Jeff in, in with a live microphone or a live yeah. headset or anything mm -hmm. like that. You never know what what's going to come out of that dude's mouth. His promos were absolutely legendary. And, and the year of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, say it. <laughs> the, the, the one that, that really stands out, I mean, the, there's, there's several of them really, but... We were we did a, a mature. Um, oh God, a, I know one you're gonna talk about. A mature about. Yep. audience show mm -hmm. in uh, Battle Creek, mm -hmm. and he was the commissioner at the time, and uh, he went into and he had some stuff to get off his chest, and boy did he ever! 
using the F word like it was a comma. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Yep. But uh, that was him. I mean, mm-hmm. he always he always pushed it to the very, very edge, especially when he and I were a tag team because I, I would tell him right before we, we walked out through the <laughs> curtain, bro, don't say this. Don't do that. You know, <laughs> we we can't. We we have to maintain some sort of of decency. Nah. You know, <laughs> he would take it right to the very will, razor's edge with that. I will never forget the. It was Summer Smash, I believe it was, when you guys, you and you and Jeff, attacked Bill and I in the ring. It was when I went good guy and we started our whole thing, and. Jeff came out and said some of the most outlandish, ridiculous stuff. And the funniest thing is, if if so many of the fans would have known that most of those promos were planned with me, Bill, and Jeff sitting in their apartment, what if you said this? Oh, my God, this would be hilarious. So we plan all this stuff, and then he left some stuff for surprises. Oh, of course he did. He likes your genuine reaction. And I'll never forget a couple of things he said and hearing your voice behind him going... You can't say that. Right. What are you doing? And uh, we're and I'm just sitting here trying not to laugh because you're in character. You know, you right. can't. The guy sitting here insulting you, no matter how funny you think it is, you got to look mad. Right. You know what I mean? And it was that was Jeff, man. That was that so, was Jeff. Another one that sticks out, Tyler, is when uh, he and I uh, wrestled you and your brother for the tag team titles at Christmas class. Oh, yeah. And we came out wearing the <laughs> the pajama onesies, and I had written that, that poem. It was like the night before Christmas, but it was like the day of Christmas class, yeah. and I went through. And, you know, he helped me write some of that. You know, because he's like... I don't well, doubt it. What, what if you said this? Now, his version of it, and what <laughs> I was actually able to say were two different things. So I had like... A script A, script B, right? <laughs> so, Depending on how you're feeling that day. Well, listen, you know, <laughs> we, we had we, we had to gauge the audience. Yeah. If there was a lot of kids in, in in the audience, we knew we had to do a more PG mm-hmm. version of it because, like I said, with a microphone in his hand, he was a lightning rod, you yeah. know, and you never knew. Like, I think it became a game for him to, to see how far he could push me before mm-hmm. I, I would snap on him, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And he would know, because I, I have, like, a look on my face. I can confirm that was a, that was a game. Um, was, yes. You know, <laughs> once I made a certain look, he's like, oh, okay, I'm going a little bit too far here. It's time to reel it back a little bit, right? Um, you know, Jeff has been a very huge part of the successes of, of the wrestling or organization. And... The MWO and ONTV have had a long-standing business re- relationship. One of our most Im- important, really. They um, they've always rolled out the red carpet for us, and um, so he he had a presence here as a superstar in every sense of the word. Because I mean, that's what he was. He was a real-life rock star, man. I mean, it's like the whether he had his 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 singlet and kick pads on or a shirt and jeans what whatever the guy just he was a star um and he had a lot of very passionate fans um he uh, you know a, a, a few years ago he and john campbell they were a very su- successful tag team here and um you know multiple time champions and they co-headlined uh, R- russell rama 21 and they would eventually break up into this blood rivalry, and we, you know, we can talk about that, you know, if, if we have time, you know, la- later on here in the program. But what I want to do r- right now is I want to show a clip from um, John and Jeff were invited to Owen TV studio a, f- a few years ago to be guests on the community, the community uh, corner. So let's run run that clip from when Jeff and John were, were guests on. And it was, at that point, one of his most proud moments that he's ever had here on ONTV. Coming live from Lake Orion, Michigan, we are watching MWO. Let me introduce you to Chipman, John Campbell, and friend, Pure Fury, Jeff Clouds, 
Welcome, guys. Welcome. Thank, you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, you for having us. So well, about MWO, what I love uh, and just wrestling in general is um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be a wrestler ever since I was a little kid. I couldn't dream of doing anything else. Wrestling. What, what, what about you, Jeff? Um, pretty much the same thing. I mean, me and my brother, we used to, we used to watch the Saturday morning shows and the Sunday morning shows, and, you know, we collected all the action figures, all the merchandise. We did? Yeah, and, um, we, we'd have our little matches, just me and him <laughs> in, in the basement, and, you know, it's just, I've never gotten out of it. Please tell us about your organization, the MWO. Um, well, the MWO originally formed in 1994. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, it started with... Um, my brother, myself, uh, a few local friends, we did a benefit show for a family that in our area. We, we grew up in a little town of Hadley, Hadley, Michigan. Um, a, a, a family in the area uh, suffered a tragedy and being the wrestling fans that we were, we, my brother had the idea to run out the uh, Hadley Town Hall and we did our first Rama there and we, you know, the it was well received. Uh, we had a lot of people come and support the support the family, and it just it really started from there. I mean, after that, I mean, we went through some some tough years. Um, the doors almost closed a few times. Did, we just didn't didn't really have anything to latch on. We didn't have a fan base that really latched on to us uh, the way it is now. Um, early 2000s, we started getting uh, more and more roster members, more and more talent. Uh, we started getting some some good shows booked, started putting on some quality shows, and it's just really it's grown never since then. What is it about wrestling in the MWO that you love? Um, wrestling in the MWO, I love wrestling. I mean, I think that's that's apparent. But the MWO is a, is a special organization. It's it's different from a lot of other independent promotions and it's more geared it's a family atmosphere um, our fans we have some of the best fans in the area they're very supportive and that's really what, what just drives me to keep wrestling for the MWO right now really um, how do you feel you benefit and loan and I think from the special needs community you get you know there is a preconceived notion and it's, it's not always a fair thing but you know it's, you know, hanging around the special need and, you know, you guys as well. I mean, you, you learn. I mean, you guys, you know, you, you come to the shows. You guys are the most energetic people in not. the room. And, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, you guys, it's the support that we get from, from you guys. And, you know, I mean, I've watched, um, last couple of years, I've watched Special Olympics mm -hmm. on, the, on TV. And I, I just, I think it's really cool. And besides, look at this. Look at all the cool stuff you guys are doing. You guys have your own TV show exactly. right here. Exactly. Hello. I yeah. mean, how many how many people can say that? That's right. You know what I mean? Get, give yourselves a hand. Who was your favorite wrestler growing up? Because everyone has a favorite growing up. My favorite growing up yeah. had to have been Hulk Hogan. The, oh, oh, yeah. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Yes. The main U.S. is Hulk Hogan. He's, he's the reason I'm here. He's, what, he's, he's my about, hero. What about you, Jeff? Um, I was an Ultimate Warrior guy. The late Brian James uh, My heart goes out to him. Yeah. Yeah. The Ultimate Warrior. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I followed. Uh, it was kind of... Um, I followed the Ultimate Warrior. My brother followed Hulk Hogan, and when yeah. they when they had their little thing going, and you know, me, six, uh, six, yeah, yeah. Mania so, six, yeah, in Toronto, Canada, at yep. the Sky Dome. Sky Dome. Now what? Now what happened when uh, Warrior won? Did you gloat? Like, did you kind of rub his face? <laughs> no, I didn't do that because he was bigger than I was. <laughs> I, I know he's on the water. I, I, you know, I, I silently smirked. <laughs> there you Smirk. go. <laughs> Silently smirked. Silently smirked. <laughs> no, smirked. You're bragging on the inside. I was. No bragging on the inside, Jeff. Come on. <laughs> right, next question. Yeah. I mean, if you could wrestle anyone in the world, who would it be and why? This is going to sound really crazy, but probably Brock Lesnar. Brock? Oh, Brock Lesnar. I would like to be able to say I took a beating from Brock Lesnar. Yeah? yeah. It's nice knowing you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite food? Come on, everybody's here. Everybody's here. 
Okay, that's going to be a little bit different, and I'm. Uh, okay. I'm a huge fan of rice. Rice is good. I like the rice. rice. I, I will nice. eat rice uh, all a, day, every a day. Favorite food? Though? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, like I, I am. Well, let me let me explain. I'm one of the pickiest eaters you'll ever meet. Really, Jeff? I don't. Really? Yeah, I don't Why? eat a lot of things. Um, most I mostly only eat dry foods. Dry? Yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't do cheese or anything. I don't cheese either. Anything really creamy or. John, right. be nice. <laughs> it's, uh, man, I'm hungry now. Do we have some, hey, why don't you all back there want to get us some food out yeah, here? Come on. Yeah, come yeah. so, yeah. on. Let me give me some more of these. <laughs> so let me ask you guys a question. Sure, that's ask. okay. I don't know if we can. Sure, sure we can, you can ask anything. You guys have have, uh, have been around to enough of the MWO shows. Yes. Who's yeah. your guys' favorite performer? Well, gentlemen, John Campbell is my favorite. I mean, come ah. on. I mean, gentlemen. Well, thank yeah, you. I appreciate. I appreciate. I have all kinds. I'm Kim Mazes. They're both my favorite. We're your favorite tag team, right? The best tag team ever. There yeah. Are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would say for me, you guys, foundation. and uh -huh. Skull. Now, if you I got like Bash, too. Bash. Oh, Bash. I don't. Depending on the day. Yes. I don't. He, I mean, he is my brother. I, I you know, know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He's all right on Thanksgiving and Christmas, all right? I, I don't know. Right. If, if, if he That's were here true. right now, we would have a match right, right here. Now, right now. Uh-oh. Oh, you that, that, Jeff? You that, you, <laughs> that, you, that? That? you get to the studio, Bash, right now. Hey, fight. Come on. Uh, we owe you one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so on behalf of myself and Aaron and I, and our, country. And our country, you two gentlemen have exemplified what wrestling is and always will be. Until then, we'll see you next time for more Michigan Wrestling Organization. Good night. That was uh, that was a fun flashback, and I have a couple of follow-ups with that. Uh -oh. he, <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he mentioned Jeff mentioned you know being a fan of the Ultimate Warrior, and I was a huge Hogan fan. Mm -hmm. And they when they wrestled at WrestleMania six, Warrior wound up beating Hogan in that match, became the WWF champion. And he he'll, he sat there and and pretty much lied to you all, uh, <laughs> because um, every day when I came home fr from school, because we had at the the action figures, mm, right? Yep. Every every day I come home from school, he got there a couple minutes before I did. He would put that stupid doll on my pillow. So <laughs> when when I walked in, um, that sounds like Jeff. It was I had to look at the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> we we also had them wrestling buddies, and, yep. and he always p positioned it to where the Warrior one was on top of Hogan. <laughs> um, so that I'd like to say I'm surprised, but that'd be a lot. Well, no, yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's just how 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 it was <laughs> back then, but. Um, I, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that his appearance on the community corner was one of the most proud things that he had been a part of as a persona, as a performer, as a superstar, you know, and, and, and you could tell, I mean, it really came through the, the camera on, you know, when, when that whole thing was shot and w when it was aired. Um, Tyler, you've been in the ring with Jeff s several times. You know, we've done tag matches. You've done singles matches. We've done them at regular events. We've done them at super cards. Is there one or two that really stand out, and why are those the ones that do stand out? Uh, there, there, there's, there's a couple. Uh, the, the Christmas Clash one with the poem, and, and, and you, you, we didn't mention you guys are wearing, like, these... Uh, I'm gonna call it Christmas onesie yeah, type deal. Yeah, like, yeah. And and you didn't tell us about it before. You you just no, showed we, up. And, and I, you had my, Santa hats on too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. My yeah. jaw dropped. It was awesome. <laughs> I love that you had wrestling boots on over yeah. the onesies. <laughs> yeah, that was man. Fantastic. Listen, <laughs> and, and our knee pads were mm -hmm. were over top. So yeah, it was ridiculous. But uh, what the one that stands out though, and it may sound cliche, it was it was the television title match at Richfield, because. Mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff went up to bat for me. He 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 handpicked me to, to to win the title. But on top of that, it was taking the title off of Jeff. And there's all, all that that whole day was still kind of surreal to me because it was only a few months into my singles run, and all of a sudden I'm getting given this big opportunity, and Jeff's the one that's like, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do." And it ended up being one of the best matches I ever had. And me and Jeff pulled out so much new stuff in that match, and had so much fun with it. Mm -hmm. And then. It was, 
after the match, it, I we were still in the ring. I gave him a I gave him a big old hug. Just, I, I was I was I was in tears just thanking him and just for everything and because he's he's taking care of me and yeah. that was one big day that kind of helped make it made it rain true. Then not long after that, there was a match up at um, IWE. John had or Jeff had taken quite a bit of time off from from up there and he came back and me and I it was me and Jeff in his return to IWE match and we had another really good match. It, me and Jeff always seem to work together very well and, and every time we're in there and and those two are the ones that really stand out to me. That is that's a testament to the amount of, of respect that he had for you, you know. And you know like like we like we talked about earlier, I can specifically remember um, sitting down and have and having that meeting with him that we were going to go with you he was going to drop the title and you know you were the guy that he picked you know because ultimately um i would have gone with however he felt about it you know because i trusted his his opinion and his judgment you know and then i had been in the ring with you so i knew how how good you were um, so that, you know, like I said, that did not happen by, by accident. Now you, Todd, um, the, when I think of our entering careers, there's, you know, your experience in, in the ring is not as like vast and, right. you know, as, as, as Tyler's was, right. but we shared a stage at WrestleRama 22 yeah. in, in, in Birch Run. Yeah. Um, kind kind of talk me through what your your experience is because at the time, the Birch Run Expo Center was one of the premier venues in in Michigan. Like yeah. everybody knew where that building was. This was our second year in a row taking R WrestleRama there, yeah. and uh, we were on opposite sides of the ring in a big eight man tag. So what what was your experience like it, with that? It all kind of it started with ONTV. Um, we had, Jeff and I had my very first singles match ever here at ONTV, uh, which was the very last showdown live. Mm -hmm. And terrifyingly enough, that whole thing was Jeff's idea. Sure. Um, I was still learning things, you know, I wasn't quite confident in, my, in myself, you know what I mean? But when Jeff believes in you, Jeff doesn't take no for an answer. Right. If he, if he feels you need a push... Jeff's going to push you as hard as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting to the venue and this was like the, our feud had just begun. And Jeff said, okay, we're wrestling each other tonight. And I'm like, you're what? Really? <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I mean, I, I know a few things, but I don't want to stink up the joint, whatever. And he looked me dead in the face and just said, I'll take care of you. Just listen, I've got you, we'll get through this and you're going to kick ass. Right. And we went out there and had a hell of a time. I can't tell you if I kicked ass or not, but it, it was fun. But that all led to the WrestleRama 22, to the eight-man you were talking about. And walking into Birch Run in the semi-main semi event of the show, and the history that was in that ring that night, you know, we had people that were Hall of Famers in the MWO that had been gone for quite some time coming back to share this this moment with us. On the other side of the ring, I had two of my best friends being Jeff and Michael Reaver and had you and Levi Blue, two people who have shown me, you know, so much already. I owe so much of what I know in the ring to all of you guys, to be completely honest. And the moments that we had in that match it was so powerful because once I got pinned in the match, it was almost a, a, a final exhale. Like, we did it. Mm -hmm. We went through this whole year-long... It was a year-long feud with, with, the, with the whole group of us. And to be able to share that moment with the person that, along with you, fought tooth and nail to get me in that ring in the first place was was huge it's always going to be my my benchmark moment because i feel for me that cemented me 
that I belonged there, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely, it makes sense. And it's very, very well said, too. Um, you know, wrestling was just such a huge part of who. Oh. No, hey. <laughs> It's I'm prepared for that. <laughs> listen, it's it's <clears throat> this is an emotional topic. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of you know, anybody that knew him on any level, you know, this is one of the weekends where, you know, it really hammers at home. Yeah. You know. Um so it, listen, I get it. Like I'm like I've I've had a lump in my throat for mm -hmm. the last twelve hours. It, it, it yeah. seems like th thinking about what I wanted to do, how I wanted to go about it, uh, bringing you guys in. Um, but uh, you know, wrestling was just such a huge part of who he was as a person. You know, I, we 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 started out as fans, then we got involved in the business, and um, you know, and I've made no bones about the fact that it is. It has been a lot of times that that glue that held our bond as one. You know, it was wrestling that we knew we were a part of. We grew something together. You know, he's very much. I mean, his fingerprints are all over the history of this organization. Um, so I find it kind of poetic because his last match here at ONTV studio was during the 2019 Tricker Slam that, yeah. that we talked about a little bit ago. And he went one-on-one -on -one with another guy that he really went to bat for that really opened a lot of doors of opportunity for him. It, as, I mean, it, as far as, the, as this organization is, is concerned, it's Backwoods Bam Grizzly. Yeah. And uh, you know, every, a, anybody that hung out for any length of time in the dressing room, they saw the camaraderie between Bam and Jeff. There was that big brother, little brother vibe. You know, Jeff took him under his wing and brought him brought him to my attention. You need to get this guy on the show, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward, we're in the midst of this gauntlet match for uh, to, to determine who was gonna challenge you later on in the show, right, mm -hmm. for, for the television championship. Um, and we do have a clip here, courtesy of ONTV. And um, so we're going to take you back to October the 5th of, t of 2019. This is the Trick or Slam event. This is Jeff's last match on ONTV. There's one man coming out, and you know who it is. Your Fury, Jeff Klaus, another one of the most decorated individuals to ever step foot in the MWO ring. Take it away, Clint. Your Fury, Jeff Klaus. Jeff Klaus going for the handshake at the beginning of it. Good to see. And now there was some, some sportsmanship, but something I did notice when when Jeff walked out, he had a big old grin. Oh, why wouldn't he? And He's going into this grin. after Bam Grizzly just had, backwards Bam, had a war with ex-convict. Oh, 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 I'd be pretty happy too if I was going into the gauntlet at this point. Absolutely. Betting odds, Vegas betting odds say that at this point, Jeff Klaus is your favorite. Just delivering some massive kicks there to Bam. You can really see Jeff just pulling back and torquing with his entire body. Beautiful kicks from Jeff. Jeff Klaus is a fresh man. He is taking full advantage of that. He is taking advantage of those long arms and legs to Flip keep over. distance from Bam, yeah. but still lay in punishment. One, two, and a kick out. Flip over snapper there. And yeah, it is important to note that Jeff Klaus might have some of the best reach in the MWL. Oh, geez. Uh, that guy can reach the top shelf any shelf. It doesn't Dubai. matter how high. His, his arms and legs are very long and... Oh! oh. Big old chop, and Dan needs to get Jeff out of the corner there, and he does. Momentarily, at least. The chop was so hard, I think I saw. Ooh, I think I saw a leaf just fly off a of Bam singlet. No, uh, when you hit him hard enough, leaves come off of him. It's like that old, old Genesis wrestling game. I've got way too much wrestling to call to think about that any further than I am right now. So let's just focus on the action. Back into the corner, Jeff is. Like a steam engine right now, plowing through. Go for the bulldog. Big bulldog, and you saw how Bam landed. Bam landed full face in the middle of the One, ring. One, two, 
Bam Grizzly apparently no. using the full energy of the forest elementals to kick out. Absolutely, as he tends to do. And Bam now, Grizzly like, as it's trying to psych Bam, himself Bam up. Bam is one of the only people that I know who can actually fire himself up by hitting himself. Bam Grizzly is one of the only people I know that can do a lot of weird stuff. What? What is? Oh, I I know. Tarantula time. Tarantula locked in. Oh, and it's locked in deep. Look Tis at Bam. the season for a spider here at Tricker Slam. Indubitably. Letting go at the last possible second, but I think that Pure Fury got all of that tarantula in. Again, and those long limbs coming back into play. Pure Fury Jeff Klaus is like a four-legged spider in the ring. It makes sense that he does the tarantula. Yeah, absolutely it does. Now using those sharp elbows to dig into the back that he's already softened up with that tarantula. And now with the chin lock in. Yep, yeah, and a beautiful reverse chin lock right here in front of our, our fans. Bam Grizzly trying to... And again, look at Bam weaken. slapping himself awake. I don't know if he's slapping himself. I think he's trying to slap the hands no, of I, Jeff Klaus. I'm he sure just he does slapping himself. <laughs> oh, you don't want to headbutt, Jeff. What or you, you don't want to headbutt there, Jeff. What you thinking? Oh, wait a second. Losing his footing there. Indubitably. Blue collar lariat. Beautiful maneuver. One, two, no. That blue collar lariat, that is a move that Bam has been perfecting over the last couple of months. Close, but no cigar. And a, a devastating lariat there. I would say if, if Jeff had hair, he might have lost some on that lariat. Whatever Bam Grizzly's going for here, I don't like it. Duck it. Ducks the close out. Wait a second. Could be setting up for that stop. There it is. Oh! This could be oh, over. This has got to be all she wrote. Bam. Tyler Dean's got to get ready for Jeff Klaus. Oh, oh. One, two, oh. 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 What's on the rope? Beautiful ring awareness from Backwoods Bam yet again. It's possible if Pure Fury would have rolled Backwoods Bam the other way, he might have put him away there, but that one mistake. Absolutely. And the look on his face says no, it all. He, he, He's upset with himself. Jeff, Jeff knows that he made the mistake there, and that's going to come back. To, and Jeff Klaus doesn't make a lot of mistakes. No, he does Bam. not. I did see him talking to his brother Bam. backstage, but you know that's a whole other mistake. Bam. 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 Oh, you. Looking for that PF5 now. He might still be able to win this thing. This could be it, Pope. Wait. Wait, Bam gets out of it. What's he setting up? Ripcord oh! headbutt. Go for the pin. One, two, yes. That is it. Ladies and gentlemen, your final winner of this gauntlet, Backwoods Bam. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will be seeing Backwoods Bam step in the ring for a third time to take on Tyler Dean for the NWO Television Championship. Absolutely, and, and if I'm Tyler Dean, I'm definitely getting prepared. Absolutely. This is a wonderfully done gauntlet match. Gauntlet match is one of my favorites. And Bam Grizzly. Following Jeff Love. Yes, he's. What a show of respect. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the highest forms of respect I've ever seen within the squared circle. Absolutely. I. That was, uh, you know, it's crazy to to sit here and, you know, er, with the earlier clip, you you got to hear his voice, and then uh, with this with this last clip, you got to see him in his true element. You know, that's where he was happiest. You yeah. know, performing in front of fans, both in the studio here and uh, the ones that were watching live on ON TV and um, it's just you know there's a lot of emotions that go into you know when you revisit things like this 
Um, Tyler, we were talking during during that clip there. You said you mentioned that you had a story that that you wanted to share real quick. Yeah, it's it's not one that inv that Jeff was involved in. It was more about Jeff. Okay. Um, it was the uh, it was the award ceremony we had when we, when we had our home venue. Okay. And Carrie had came with these two big sub sandwiches to defeat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I know where you're going with yep. this. Yep. And I, I come out. Um, I was going to my truck for something. I can't remember what it was. And I, I see Carrie frantic in the back of the truck. I'm like, "What's going on? What can I? What can I do? How can I help?" She's like, "Both these subs have cheese on all of them. I asked them to have half of them, half of it, have, not have cheese." <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, 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 I'm, I'm puzzled for something. I'm like, "Oh crap!" Because anyone who knows everybody Jeff, knew, right? Yep. No cheese Unless for Jeff, pizza. right? Because as he said earlier, he's he's very picky, and no cheese on pizza. And I'm, I'm and I didn't know the extent of how bad it was. I said, "Well, can't um, can't Jeff just pick it off?" She's like, "No, if if he knows it touched it, he will not eat it." Right. <laughs> so me and Carrie are, are frantically pulling cheese off all these. And then you walk up, and you're like, "What's going on?" And then you look down, and you're like, "Oh shoot!" <laughs> <laughs> like he, no words had to be said. And you already knew. <laughs> yeah, that's it's funny. <laughs> And for the it was it was a frantic moment because <laughs> I I remember Carrie coming in and she said we you know we have a problem they put cheese on all the subs and like you said um, if he knew it was on there he wasn't touching it yep. you know now if he couldn't taste it and didn't know about it that it was, was fair game. right mm -hmm. it, and Which, you served as like the lookout we, we're still going right like, yeah. Up there. right yeah I was because I knew me, how serious this was <laughs> and you look at me and and, and you said Tyler. You need to take this to your grave. Jeff can never find yeah, out. Don't <laughs> ever say a word of this. Jeff. And what's funny about it is before everything happened with him, you know, with the tragedy and all that, it was like a couple of weeks before everything went, went down. Um, M Melissa, his wife, had um, called me and said, you're not going to believe what just happened here. And she had made some sort of, I believe it was a Mexican dinner, some sort of Mexican dish. And Jeff liked Mexican food. He just didn't want cheese in it, right? Well, unbeknownst to him, she had put cheese in whatever it was that they were eating. And he loved it and had no idea that, that there was cheese in it. So she, she got one over on him. So, <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's funny. He just, man... Like awesome. at his memorial, I told the story of of our Hooters trip yeah. when he ordered he ordered a burger. It came out with cheese on it after taking over an hour, and you know he was upset. They take it back. I don't want it. They brought it back like two minutes later, and I'm like, hey man, you may want want to flip that patty over, make sure they didn't just scrape the cheese off of it and put it. And that's exactly what they did. <laughs> um, and like he that that thing went flying through the restaurant like he was not having any, any part of it so just you know we we could sit here for hours and and, yeah. pre, and, and presumably days um talking about jeff his contributions his his legacy you know both professionally and personally but as as we as we wind this down do you guys have any Anything that you took away? Any, I mean, I, obviously you took a lot away from your time with him, but um, is there anything that really stands out when you, when, you, when you hear Jeff Klaus? What's the first thing that, that comes to mind? For me, a lot of it is believing in yourself. Um, when I stepped away from wrestling for a bit, I remember you and I having a conversation that you were talking to Jeff about it. And Jeff told you, if, if, if I remember right, I won't last. He'll be right. back. And when you told me that, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm I'm done with this stuff, whatever. And then when he passed away, about a week or so after the funeral had happened, I kind of had this, like a like a pull in my in inside of me, like you're not done. Right. You need to go back. You need to. You love doing this. It was almost like he was in my head cutting a promo on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and in that sense, I always carry a piece of him with me because that's one of the main reasons when I came back, um, not being Simon Page anymore, 
in any of that stuff, being myself, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that was inspired by Jeff and how much he believed in me as a person, not just a character or a performer or anything like that. Um, so he was a humongous um, influence with that, and that's something I'll always carry with me in whenever every, any show we do. Right. Tyler. With, with Jeff, you, once, once you get to know him, you, you learn that he, the reason he's, it takes time to get to know him right before he lets you in is because he loves hard. Mm -hmm. And in turn, he hates hard too because cause once he's let you in, and, 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 and if someone that, that's, that he's let in betrays him or, or does something that just destroys him, it, it destroys Jeff. Yeah. And it and sometimes he, he and he'll let you know when when you've truly screwed up and right. and but and because I'm the same way though it, you you when when you love hard you you give you give that, that that person that thing everything you have and I, I I learned that with Jeff and I I I learned that he, that um he was just kind of my guardian angel when it came to wrestling and because even though I I I'm, I I get cocky and mouthy and have fun I the one thing that a lot of people don't know is I don't think very highly of myself I. I beat myself up a lot when it comes to things, and Jeff was always one of the first ones to go. You're doing fine. You're you're, you're doing great. You just keep doing your thing. And so Jeff was kind of my support system and and pushing ahead and and having some sort of confidence in the things that I do. And it's something that I I, I think about Jeff every time I get ready for a match because of that. And he's someone who always pushed me and made and made me feel confident. Well, that's an amazing thing. I'm sure like you can attest to this, like. Like a lot of people will will tell others that they believe in you, but Jeff was someone who made sure he told you all the time. Yes, you know what I mean. If you were ever doubting yourself, he was one of the first people to get right in your face and tell you just how much he thought of you. He certainly is going to leave a. Um, he's left just a huge. His influence is going to be felt by everybody that knew him on any level for the duration, yeah. right? Like there's only there's only one Jeff Klaus, and uh, like there's not a day that goes by that something doesn't trigger a memory, <laughs> doesn't uh, you know? There's he and I, you know. It's it's hard to put in, in into words sometimes just the magnitude of everything, right? Because he was just such a polarizing f figure in every way, shape, or form. And uh, those who know him n are are better people because they know of him. And uh, and the lessons that he's tried to instill, which is very obviously very obvious with. With these two gentlemen, and uh, um, you know, the only thing now that we can do is always remember what he meant to us. And uh, you know, when there's that, when there's that tug in the, at the heartstrings, man, that's him. That's him playing those those heartstrings to let you know that he's still very much around. Maybe just not in the way that we would prefer him to be here, but you know, he's in our hearts. He's in our minds. And uh, he is sorely missed every single day by a tremendous amount of people. Uh, Tyler and Todd, I certainly appreciate you guys coming on here tonight. Thank for you. for everybody who tuned in, I certainly appreciate your time. Joe Johnson and the entire staff here at ONTV for always welcoming us. And we will be back here for another installment of Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV on August the 13th, beginning at 6 p.m. with a brand new episode. So until then, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you next month right back here on Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV.